Okay, well, good morning, everybody. It is 10 o'clock, and we're going to go ahead and get started with our uh, webinar this morning, uh, which focuses on computer-aided inspection with Geomagic Control X. Uh, my name is Dan Perot with Neometrics Technologies. And since we're going to be doing a little PowerPoint here and then a live demonstration, I'm going to go ahead and turn my camera off. I'm the least interesting part of the presentation today. Um, so before we get into the technical meat of the presentation. I'm going to talk a little bit about uh, Neometrics. We were founded in 2003. We focus on 3D technology for engineering and manufacturing, primarily 3D scanning and 3D printing. Uh, we're an engineering service provider as well as a value-added reseller for manufacturers such as Creaform, Mtansis, Mark Forged, and Big Rep. And today we'll be talking about uh, Geomagic software. So having been in business for, since 2003, uh, we've had the pleasure of working with a variety of different companies uh, throughout our history. Uh, some big players in the market, such as Lockheed Martin and Disney, and also a lot of other folks, smaller companies you probably never even heard of, like uh, Walker Die Casting and Metro Electronics. So let's talk about uh, what applications are best suited for 3D scanning for inspection. Uh, 3D scanning is really best for very complex shapes that you cannot easily measure by other means. So things like impellers and turbine blades, where you've got you know, very complex uh, contoured curvature. Uh, boats and airplanes, again, not a lot of straight lines on those items, very difficult to measure by hand. Uh, automotive sheet metal, probably some of the most complex geometry uh, you know, being manufactured today. A lot of very complex shapes and uh, a lot of different parts that have to fit together. Uh, castings also get a lot of uh, a lot of non-geometric uh, types of geometry on those types of parts. Very very difficult to measure by hand, and medical devices. And that's really just a tip of the iceberg as far as applications go. Really, any complex shape that you can't measure with a traditional tool. So what are poor candidates for 3D scanning? Well, that would be stuff that uh, is very geometric and things that you can easily measure with other tools. You know, very geometric parts, low tolerance, things like you find in construction, bricks, two by fours, you know, easily measure that kind of stuff with a tape measure. Uh, conversely, if you have something like, you know, gauge blocks and gauge pins, very geometric, but very, very precise. So again, you know, probably better measured with something like uh, micrometers or calipers. Uh, 3D scanning is, for the most part, optical, so things that are transparent don't scan very well, not without some sort of uh, surface treatment, either, you know, some sort of spray on dust or paint. And then finally, things like, you know, very small precision screw threads, again, probably better off to measure those with something like a thread gauge. So let's talk about the scanners um, before we go too far. So again, we, uh, we're representatives for Creaform. So we sell the Creaform line of 3D scanners. We uh, start with the entry level, which would be the PL3D. Those are handheld structured light scanners. Not super accurate, uh, but a reasonable entry level price point. You get into then move into the GoScan 3D, also white light, going to be more accurate, um, larger field of view. And then when we start talking about inspection, what we're really talking about from Creaform is going to be the HandyScan line of products and the MetroScan. So both the HandyScan and the MetroScan are laser-based systems. Uh, the HandyScan is a self-contained unit, and it requires uh, sticker targets to be placed on the part to position itself in space. If we look at something like the MetroScan, not only does it have the handheld scanner, it also has a handheld probe. And all those can be tied together with this optical tracker called the C-Track, which sets up a, a single working volume, which ties together the part with the probe and the scanner. And then finally, both the handy scan and the metro scan can be adapted uh, to a robotic work cell for automated scanning and inspection processes. So talking a little bit more detail about the handy scan. So again, it's a handheld uh, laser scanner. Again, we talk about accuracy for inspection. So the handy scan is accurate to just under a thousandth of an inch, you know, 25 microns on a small part. It emits a series of laser X's. So uh, 11 blue laser crosses 
plus an additional optional uh, Singer laser line for scanning into deep pockets. The handy scan is very fast as far as data collection goes with over a million points um, per second. And it's recommended for uh, parts of varying sizes. Uh, right here, you know, in the spec sheet, it says half a millimeter up to four millimeters, or excuse me, half a meter up to four meters. Uh, but I would typically recommend this device for, you know, items even as small as like a golf ball, something that fits in the palm of your hand up to a small car. Here we have a few action shots uh, showing where the handy scan is best used. Since it is so portable, we can take it out to the uh, manufacturing floor here as we see we're measuring some sort of airfoil. Or you can take it into an airplane hangar, put the laptop right there on the wing and, and scan away. Um, also, because of the blue laser technology, the handy scan is very good on reflective parts. So even on something as shiny as a chrome plated wheel rim, uh, we can scan that without any sort of surface treatment. And then not only is a handy scan good for those larger items like we saw in the last slide, it's also a very high resolution scanner. So on small features, particularly on stuff like uh, injection molded plastic parts, you can see the level of detail that you can, uh, you can capture with this device. Now for larger parts, uh, we would typically move into a MetraScan. And again, that's a system that includes the C-Track, which is the optical tracker. The MetraScan itself, which um, as you can see, is like a, a small handy scan here, but it is surrounded by a framework that has targets on pucks. That's what allows it to be tracked in space by the C-Track. Uh, similarly, the handy probe works the same way where it has a, a series of optical targets on it, again, tracked by that C-Track. So it sets all of those items up with the part into a single reference system. So it is uh, designed to be used for larger items. So up to you know 20 feet in length. Um, we had actually used this device uh, you know, in our service business for doing boat hulls up to 35 feet long. So very, very good on large objects. Again, very fast data collection, so almost 2 million points per second. You've got 15 laser crosses plus that extra single laser stripe for scanning into deep pockets. So here are a few uh, images showing that Metro scan in use. So here on the upper left, we see we're, uh, we're scanning with the Metro scan a um, part of a mold for a trash can. And we're in the foreground, we've got the C-Track. So it is looking at that uh, metro scan here to position it in space while the scanner scans the surface, surface of the object. Again, this is a portable system, not quite as portable as the handy scan, but you can take that C-Track out with the metro scan here in the manufacturing floor and even uh, you know out inside an aircraft to scan those aircraft structures. Now just taking a look at a few images showing the handy probe in use. Again, the, the probe is really good for measuring more geometric features, primarily hole locations. So you can use this probe much like you would a CMM to get uh, you know, hole locations, diameters, and that sort of thing. All tied into the same coordinate system as the Metroscan. So how does the workflow work for 3D scanning for inspection? Well, here we have our, our object and it's been targeted up for use with the handheld scanners. So once it's scanned, then we get a data set, which uh, from a Creoform scanner will be a polygon mesh or an STL file. Now for reverse engineering, we would pull that into a software package like GeoMagic DesignX uh, to create a CAD model from the data. But today we're talking about inspection. So we take this scan data then we align it and overlay it onto our existing CAD model and then start pulling off uh, dimensional information. So here we can see a, a quick color map, which gives us an overall picture of the quality of the part that we're inspecting. So we do all this in GeoMagic Control X. And so Control X is designed to work with scan data and CAD files so you can compare your existing part to your design. So in addition to a quick overlay to get that color map, you can also extract all kinds of geometric information 
um, pretty much anything that you would see on a 2D drawing or that you could measure with a CMM, you can use Control X uh, to extract from the scan data. So Control X is, is very easy to learn. It's got a very straightforward user interface. Folks that are already using a 3D CAD system uh, find it very easy to pick up because the layout is very similar to CAD programs like SolidWorks. Um, with minimal training, most people are productive on the first day. Control-X is quick to use. It's fast. So again, using that CAD model, you can quickly extract geometric features simply by picking on surfaces of the CAD, so planes, cylinders, and cones. Uh, you can also pick your dimensions directly off that CAD model, and then Control-X extracts the correlating dimension from your scan data. We got that color map here, which uh, is a very quick overall comparison of the part to the CAD. And then finally, all that data can be output in a uh, comprehensive reporting. Control X is a comprehensive package, which means it includes everything. So you've got all your scan data, point cloud and mesh processing tools, uh, native CAD importers, so you can take in your, your CAD models directly from SOLIDWORKS, CATIA, or other programs, um, as well as customized modules for airfoil analysis and a defect or dent location. And uh, reporting and trend analysis is all built in, as well as tools to automate your inspection process without knowing any sort of coding. Control-X is a, it's a modern software package, and it was designed to work with a variety of 3D scanners. So although today, uh, you know, we're talking about Creoform scanners, because that's what we represent, uh, Control-X will work with just about any other 3D scanner on the market, as well as portable CMMs. So it's got an open interface, can import data from pretty much any device. Also, the algorithms that are used for calculating the geometry and the deviations have been certified by national organizations such as NIST and PTB, so you can be confident that the results you acquire are correct. All right, now we're going to be transitioning into our live Control X demo. Uh, we're going to first take a quick look at a video. We scanned our demonstration piece with our handy scan a little while back, and we did a quick video of that. Uh, we will take that data with a CAD model and import that into Control X, quickly align those together, uh, then take a look at a datum based alignment. And then we'll go through the 3D color map as well as 2D and 3D dimensions. And finally, outputting that data into a report. And I'll show you a little bit of the automation where we can then simply replace the scan data in that session and automatically update our report. All right, so here's our quick scanning video. So here's the handy scan. You'll notice the uh, laser X's that are emitted that are scanning the part. You can also see the targets on that manual turntable. So the targets allow the scanner to reference itself in space so it knows where it is. And then the data is automatically being input into VX elements. And when the scanning is complete, that data will be saved out as a polygon mesh as an STL file. And that's what we will be importing into Control X. All right, so I'm going to Alt tab over find my control X session. Okay, here's control X. So again, we've got our, our toolbar ribbon up on top. And then we have our uh, feature tree here or model manager showing us everything we do step by step. So I'm going to begin with importing my CAD model. So here's the original design of the part that we'll be inspecting. And next we'll import the STL from that scan session. The so important thing with STL is we, we need to know the file units. Um, STL files are unitless. So we make sure we put the units that the item was scanned in in our file name. 
At least that's what we do here, so to avoid confusion. Okay, so here we can see we've got our scan data and we've got our CAD model. So our first challenge is to align those two together. So we're gonna do an initial alignment and we're gonna use the quick option. We'll click the checkbox. And then in the background, uh, Control X is calculating how to orient that scan data back down to the CAD. So that quick alignment, that gets us close, uh, but many times in the inspection world or engineering world, um, the uh, alignment is specified through a series of datums. So we can support that here in Control X by doing a datum-based alignment. So we're simply gonna pick features on our CAD model um, to establish those datums. Or you could use reference geometry that is created, um, you know, from offsets or, or things are constructed, constructed off the uh, existing geometry there. So I'm gonna do my first datum pair. So I pick on this planar surface, that's my first pair. My second surface here, and then my third. And so now we've effectively realigned our part using those datums. So that was, that was very easy. Um, so you can use you know, planar surfaces or you can, let's say, construct geometry. Like if I wanted an axis between this uh, conical feature and that cylinder, I could create a reference vector there and use things like that. So you have a variety of different options. All right, so we're aligned. So now we want to uh, start checking things. So what I like to do first is our 3D compare. We go ahead and just hit the next button. So at this point, it compares all the points in our uh, scan data back to the underlying CAD and gives you a, a color map uh, according to the rainbow bar here on the side of the screen. So we've got a tolerant set of 0.1 millimeters. So everything that is within 0.1 comes in green. As things deviate on the plus side, they go red. As they deviate on the negative side, they go blue. At this point, if I want to, I can adjust my tolerances. So let's say I want to examine this a little bit more closely. I can double click on that number in the rainbow bar and change that. So we're going to tighten up that tolerance to 05. And maybe I'll shorten that band oops, to 0.5. And we can see as we make changes to our tolerance band, it updates that color map. So we can clearly see um, by upping the tolerance we get a little bit more description of what's going on with this shape. So since it's blue in the middle and blue goes negative, I can see that I've got sort of a, uh, a dip in that surface. So I can click on that point and it gives me the exact deviation at the point where I click. So if we want to flag areas of concern to whoever's gonna be reviewing our report, we simply click on that color map and it gives us the deviation at that point. So very, very quick, easy way to communicate what's going on with your part. So that's our 3D compare um, to give you the overall view. Similarly, we can do a 2D comparison. And this is where we, um, we take a look at things in a cross section. So I'm gonna do a Y cross section. So here, when I click on the Y button, it establishes a plane and I have an arrow here. I can move and put that plane pretty much anywhere I like. So I'm gonna go right here. I hit next. So now we're looking at that deviation in a, in a two dimensional fashion. Um, the nice thing about the 2D compare is we can magnify the deviations in what's called a whisker plot. So again, I said that there was a little dip going on in the center of the part. By magnifying that deviation, we can see that here a little bit more clearly. And just like in the 3D compare, I can pick anywhere on that section and it gives me the deviation at that point. So quickly and easily, we're getting a lot of information regarding what's going on with the shape of this part. So again, that, that looks like that's kind of a problem. So let's go ahead and click a few annotations there. 
and just a few more on top for good measure. All right, so we took a look at 3D compare and 2D compare as a good overall check of the shape of our part. Now, engineering drawings typically have a, a series of dimensions on them. So again, we can use Control X to examine those dimensions. So I'm gonna go ahead and hide my 2D and 3D compare simply by clicking on the little eyeball icon next to item in my tree. I'm gonna go over to the dimensions tab. So first we'll do some 3D dimensions. We have a few different options. So I can just do what's called a smart dimension. If I click that, if I pick on a face or an edge, so let's say, say I pick on this face, that's a spherical feature in my CAD model. So the system knows it's a sphere. It calculates that diameter. It compares it back to a constructed sphere in the scan data and compares it to that 0.1 millimeter tolerance I have set. So all that done with one click. You can also click on edges. So if I wanna know the diameter of that cylindrical feature at that spot, we can do that as well. You'll also notice the tolerance here shows up in the annotation. That also shows up in my dialog box. So if that feature, let's say, has a different tolerance, I can either pick from the pre-populated list here or I can punch in a different number. So let's say I wanna to go to a quarter millimeter on that feature. And then that updates the comparison. So you'll notice the, uh, the colors in those annotation boxes. So green is within tolerance, yellow is getting close to your tolerance. And if we find a feature that's out of tolerance, that'll show up in red. So we can also do some, uh, some linear dimensions. It might be of interest to, let's say, you know, what is the distance between those two spherical objects? And we can do those sorts of things. Now we also have uh, built in here a series of G, D, and T functions. So for example, you know, we spoke a little bit about this surface here having a dip in it. We can also put a, a flatness dimension. So let's say it should be flat within 0.1. Now, as I mentioned, the, uh, the dialog box here, the color of that box indicates, you know, a certain condition. So red shows it's out of tolerance. Now I may want to see this in a little bit more detail. If I right click on that box, I can change the annotation style and go to a detailed display. So that's gonna show me, you know, my tolerance of 0.1 and the actual measured value of flat of uh, about 0.38 millimeters. And that's why it's out of tolerance. Now, all those dimensions that we've been um, selecting on the CAD file, the results are showing up in a table that ends up in the bottom of your screen area here. So if that's a little bit small for you to see, um, you can also see that information down here in the table. So clearly we can see oh, our flatness is out, that failed. These other dimensions are good. And this guy's uh, getting close to an out of tolerance condition. Okay, so that's 3D dimensioning. I'm gonna go ahead and hide those. Now we can also do 2D dimensions, which are going to require the addition of a section plane. So I'm going to pick this planar surface here, move that up a little bit. And now this shows me my cross section. Um, and again, same type of dimensions that we had in 3D are available in 2D. So if I choose the smart dimension, you know, it knows that's a circle. So it's going to calculate the diameter. Or if we want to do like a linear dimension, you know, maybe use this like a pair of calipers, get an overlay, oops, get a, uh, an overall width. So you can pretty much dimension this just like you would a drawing. And then all your dimensions appear on the screen like that. Well, let's go ahead and throw one more in. Maybe I want to know the, uh, the length of this slot here. Oh, and again, that one's out of tolerance. So maybe I want to change my display, get a little bit more information. And when things are good, nobody really cares. When things are out, we certainly want to know why. Uh, finally, we can do some angular dimensions here as well. 
you know, pretty much anything you could do on a 2D drawing or measure with a CMM, you can inspect using these functions here in the, uh, the 2D dimensions. Okay, so let's say that um, I've now checked or inspected everything that I'm interested in on this part. Final step here is to go ahead and create a report. So I'm gonna to go to the generate a report button. And now it's going to uh, give me some options here. So you'll notice this list here on the left is exactly the same as what's in my tree. Um, so we can choose what appears on our report. So as a default, everything that we did, that we selected, um, shows up here in the selected entities list. If there are things that maybe I checked that I, I don't want to show up in my report, so let's say maybe that initial alignment, I don't want that in the report. I'm gonna kick that out so it pulls it out of the list when I click this button. Mm. I think we'll leave the datum alignment in there. Okay, all that looks good. We're gonna hit generate. And now it is going to do all that calculation in the back ground. And once it's done cooking, we should see our report show up on the screen. Okay, so here's our report. So the first page, we have a header. So there are items in here that you can change. Um, if we click in this box and go edit, so part name, I'm gonna go ahead and change that to and demo part. Part number, we can change that as well. This is actually a sample one. Department, if that's important, let's call it quality. All right, our header's all set. So let's take a look now, we've got our header set. Let's go ahead and review the rest of our report. So we start scrolling down. First thing we see are some uh, standard views of our CAD file. Scroll a little more. We see those same views of our scan data. Here we see the results of our alignment. Of course, our, our primary datum got zero error, a little bit more error on the secondary datum, a little bit more on the tertiary. Then we see the results of our 3D compare. Now everywhere I clicked in annotation, those results uh, show up in this table. Similarly, here's our 2D compare with the whiskers. All of our annotations, annotations uh, also show up in this table. And we've got our 2D dimensions. And finally, those 3D dimensions. So, so this comprehensive uh, multi-page report was pretty much created automatically with one mouse click. So what do we do if we have a bin full of parts and I want to repeat all these dimensions you know, without doing a whole lot of work? Let's switch back over to our main screen. So Control X uh, does have some automation built in. So let's say I do, I scanned a second part and I want to compare it to the CAD the exact same way I did the first one. All we need to do is click this replace measured data, pick our new scan data set. I'm going to hit run inspection process. So now it's replacing the original scan data and then it's recalculating the alignment and all the dimensions automatically. So this is really a fantastic function if you did have a bin full of a dozen or so parts to check. You only have to build this inspection routine once and then run it like a template uh, on all the resultant or the uh, subsequent data sets. Okay, so let's hide our scan. We can turn on our color map. So we can see the, re well, if you were paying attention, you can see that the results here are, are quite a bit different. This particular feature seems to be way out of whack compared to the, uh, the original part. Kind of by design, we wanted to uh, illustrate that. Now, if I toggle back over to my report, I'm gonna scroll back to the top. So 
So we notice now that I have a new data set in Control X that we did uh, the comparison form, I have this little curly Q icon that shows up in my report from the original data. And that's prompting me to rebuild this report using the new data set. So once it's done rebuilding, we'll see the, uh, the scan data color changes. This is a good clue that we have a new set of data. And then if we scroll down, oh, there's our updated color map. And I want to get down to the, uh, the location. So this one feature, I didn't, I didn't really uh, memorize the dimension that we had here last time, but we can clearly see um, on this new part that that particular feature is mislocated relative to the CAD. And you can, even without any numbers, you can see the dotted line here is the scan data. The solid one's the CAD model. That feature's out. So that pretty much sums up our presentation for Control X. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and switch back to my PowerPoint screen here. Okay, so I haven't been paying too much attention to the uh, chat, but at this point, if anybody has any questions, if you could please go ahead and type that into the chat. I will stay online here for the next few minutes and uh, see if we can't get those questions answered. Also, if you have, if, you know, if you don't want to post questions in the chat, if you have other questions, please feel free to email me at dan at neometricstech.com or give us a call, 888-696-7226. Again, uh, you know, we represent these products from a sales perspective, so we sell Preform scanners and Geomagic software, and we are also an engineering service provider. So if you did have uh, just a part or two that you need to have checked you know, for inspection or even reverse engineering, we do that as well. So we're happy to help uh, whatever your needs may be. And again, if you have any questions, please go ahead and put those in the chat. And uh, I will stay online here for the next couple of minutes. Thank you very much for your time this morning. I really appreciate everybody uh, taking the time to sit in on this presentation. I hope you found it informative. Thank you.